Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. I'm Shkil Ahmed and I belong to Deanship of E-Learning and IIT. Thanks for joining the session and uh, with this training session, also welcome back to the new session of Jamma Jazan. And it was long summer vacation. I can understand like uh, there were some difficulties for those who traveled during the summer vacation. But Alhamdulillah, after a long time, after a couple of years, we are getting COVID restriction is getting me like it's giving us favor to relaxing the restriction in Saudi Arabia. But it was very tough time. But these couple of years changed the life completely. That is not a minor change. This was a huge change. I believe that the whole world that transformation and during this transformation, the internet, computer and e-learning played a vital role to sustain the consistency and especially for the education sector. You can see if uh, these three components were, wouldn't be available over there, then we can imagine what kind of disaster can be done during these couple of years. Uh, the e-learning, uh, the distance learning and computer learning and internet played a complete transformation role during all this time. At that time when I, I believe that uh, last year in March, when everything gone close and uh, at that time, no one had the vision what is going to be happen in coming days. Earlier, we thought that this uh, epidemic or uh, I mean, everyone uh, thought earlier that this is just an epidemic. It would be uh, end up in coming two or three months. But after three or four months, when WHO announced that this is not epidemic, this is I mean pandemic and this would not just affect only China. It would affect all the world at that time. All the government start thinking about the solutions and special solutions for the education because you know that uh, everything can be managed but if you are not uh, eligible or uh, to accept the change at that time the education is the most important part at that time to continue with some kind of uh, transformation at that time i think so internet computer computer things and uh, e-learning especially the combination of computer and internet make us able to communicate with the students and continue our activities and during this period of time definitely everyone stuck at their homes the teachers can't travel to the colleges students are not allowed to join the live sessions so at that time we have started our education from home and there were many platforms available for these type of homes like uh, Jazan University took the initiative to use the blackboard virtual classrooms and to deliver their lectures but what would happen at that time most of the teachers and students were in difficult scenario that how to tackle all these things how to make this communication easy with each other and especially for the teacher side that how to record the uh, lectures, a, a good quality lectures, best quality audio and uh, best quality presentations as well. So today uh, we are going to discuss about uh, something that is uh, mostly people don't care about these things but I believe with little bit care with little bit investment you can uh, make your session more attractive more comfortable to deliver to the students and uh, more interactive as well and so we're going to take start with the educational home studio our topic is educational home studio and the first thing comes in our mind what is home studio actually the active use of the flipped classroom model is pushing more and more educators towards finding new and more creative ways to deliver study material to the students this includes creating more engaging and high quality video lectures don't think about that just taking the laptop and start delivering the lecture is called home studio home studio i can say that this is a complete replacement of the a professional studio 
because uh, during the pandemic no one is able to travel to the college or the university to uh, take the lectures the professional and use the professional studio over there so uh, by using their uh, home devices by their laptops by their mics by their uh, using different light scenario they can prepare all these things at their home so these small studios is the replacement of the professional studio you can say a studio set up for home recording is called a home studio or project studio Home recording is the practice of uh, recording sound in a private home instead of a professional recording studio. So you can set up. So in this session, uh, we will try to understand. I will discuss with you many ways that uh, what kind of uh, home studios we can prepare at home and uh, what kind of equipments we do need it during our preparation of the home studio. And by investing a little money, how much the content of your lectures can be improved normally studios go through four key stages in their evolution number one is bedroom studio the second one is dedicated home studio the third one is semi pro studio and the last one is pro means the professional studio don't take it the bedroom studio normally i believe 90 to 95 percent uh, people think about the bedroom studio means to take the laptop put it in your lap and start taking the lecture that is called bedroom studio no actually bedroom studio which is typically a small setup next to your bedside I mean like it's in your bedroom but you have to prepare it uh, properly you could have something on a small space you can prepare for the bedroom studio and absolute minimum you need to record a sound into your computer so we have to take care of all these things that not only taking the laptop putting it uh, in your lap and start connected with an internet and that's it no we need some more things which uh, can helpful for us and you know, we, we have to discuss all these things in coming slides what is the dedicated home studio this is one of the best thing we have to discuss and this is dedicated home studio which is typically a room in your home used especially for recordings that includes both studio furnitures and acoustic treatment mean like uh, you should have a specific room and then furniture and audio setup over there which can help you to deal with the uh, good quality lectures over there the third one is semi pro studio which can be either at home or a different location and typically includes the equipment necessary to record multiple musicians simultaneously if you want to like you need to invest a little more and uh, you want to record multiple lectures at the same time or you, you want to add more professional things so you can go with the semi pro studio and the last one is pro studio which is typically located at a commercial facility that would not be available at home but that is on commercial uh, facility and includes whatever tools necessary to produce professional results in the most efficient way possible so we can say the professional studios are more expensive and need the bigger space and a commercial zone hub and uh, normally uh, you can see the uh, big tv channels or educational institutions have to prepare this kind of uh, like educational studios to prepare the high quality content okay let's take a start with a special thing find the like bright space in your home and what kind of space uh, you need at your home to prepare a simple but elegant educational studio at home having dedicated re recording space to record lectures is ideal i mean we can say it should be be dedicated place what kind of facilities you can get by dedicated place that this means creating a permanent setup that is always there when you need it Having a recording studio always ready to go saves a lot of preparation time and will help keep you motivated to record. This is obvious that uh, something uh, at your home specially dedicated for specific uh, tasks and whenever you need to record the lectures and you visit over there, all the things being set over there, your laptop, your lightning properly and the mic system over there, obviously now, this is uh, natural that your motivation level is very high at that time to do something different. And of course, ad hoc or mobile type scenario will work as well, but the general design principles will remain the same. If you do not have a specific space at your home, 
uh, you can use the adopt or mobile type of scenarios which can move from one place to another place but the principle remains same you need to carry on all of your gadgets with you and another important thing look for a quiet room there is a lot of noises and people chatting and there is coffee popping or many other things that can distract you so no extra background noises of the people and no sirens wailing in the background you do not want these sounds to end up in your video so need to be very careful if you have a faculty office this is another very important thing that if you are not at home, you want to deliver your lecture at your faculty. So what is important? This could be a good place to start. Try to pick a room enclosed by all four walls. This will give you the best audio and least distraction. If you are performing something at your office, for sure, because at home, sometimes you do not have all the facilities, but your college is providing so administration you think about that one that should be the quiet room there should not be any distraction uh, which can help you to record the best quality lectures another important thing that consider the size of the room it should not be very big it should not be very small and at least what kind of room is enough or physical for you it has to be large enough to allow for at least three feet of space between both the camera and you and between you and the background the total of six feet is enough for a good place shooting very close to a wall isn't ideal because this can create hard shadows that beautiful depth of field effect always looks great on camera but you need some space to create it if you're very close their shadow being over there and your video quality would not be good as much as you're looking for another important thing is get a robust desk to sit behind a good desk or a desk that can help you to sit or stand that type of a desk is uh, uh, good for your recording and especially to facing the camera simultaneously with your narration you will be going through a presentation on your computer or demonstrating something so having some horizontal real estate is important standing is okay too if you're comfortable with that doesn't matter just remember that your mobility will be limited because of the fixed camera position for sure if the camera is fixed you need to restrict yourself not to go outside the frame so that is important what else set the stage what does it mean turn off all the fans remove echoes need backgrounds why that is important that is very much important for educational home studio the reason behind after you have picked the space a right space you will need to soundproof it if it's not soundproof it's a big room it's there is eco and there is uh, many other things that is distracting you it means your videos uh, would not be recorded uh, the way you are looking for turn off all the fans air conditioning and other electric appliances and why all of these can create unpleasant background noises so you have to turn them off sound bounces of walls the reason behind to turn them off is sound bounces of walls creating equals and how to battle this fill the room with soft objects and what kind of objects such as blankets and pillows you can put over there for example you think that room is quite big and uh, it is creating an eco and sound eco so how you can reduce it you can put soft objects like blankets and pillows hanging up blankets and having carpets on the floor will also help absorb sound waves so if you are filling up or hanging up your uh, blankets and pillows and putting the carpet on the floor it can help you to absorb the extra noises creating a better lecture recording environment it is very important to think and keep all these uh, ideas in your mind before recording if you have a larger budget for sure that uh, whatever you are putting you're investing more you are getting more and uh, if you have a larger budget consider purchasing acoustic form and what is this form this is basically audio friendly form it's though like it's kind of ribbed wall panels that you might see in audio according to studios 
so if you have a visit somewhere in commercial zones or uh, in a very specific like commercial studios you can find out over there that they do have a specific equipment to record different type of audio equipment that is there are different types we can discuss in the coming slides that desktop mic and uh, caller mic and many other mics which can help you to uh, create a good content think about where your camera is going to be uh, this is another important part that uh, your audio your lightning your camera your sitting postures all does matter for good content so think about your camera is going to be the framing of the shot and pick a neat background why would you need a neat background something calm maybe with a pop of colors but not too busy because if you have a too busy background at that time is distraction for the viewers as well uh, they are not watching at you all the time but they're watching and distracting their intentions to watch and to listen just because of the background so you need to be very careful with this one clean up the space remove any distracting items uh, from the background and pay attention to details those with a larger budget may consider getting background paper you can uh, put it backdrop papers uh, which makes for very smooth looking background and darker tones looks better on video if you consider your pictures and some someone taking your video and recording your video and you can see that if the backgrounds are neat and clean and they do have the darker shade they you can bring out the pictures very good pictures and especially like your videos can come very good but if this is too much busy backgrounds and um, there are didn't clean them up at that time there is a lot of i mean you you cannot be impressed with your videos or pictures at that time another important thing is position the camera we are discussing one by one everything and all these things are like placing the important part in educational studio you need to think each and everything carefully and place them carefully so you can have the actual uh, results which you are looking for if you're using a computer with a webcam to record your video the webcam is of course fixed on top of the computer if you're using a better camera like a camcorder or dsl camera then a good place to put it would be on the tripod across from your other side of the desk if you will be using a computer to go through and describe presentation slides be sure the computer isn't blocking the camera view why these things are important camera should be in your eye level it should not be higher or downward or sometimes a camera putting on the bottom and it's not clear vision over there and another important part the camera location is very important that while presentation or you are um, narrating something at that time your camera is not in between these uh, documents and between you so you need to be careful all these things you can see in this picture that um, what we have discussed that uh, a neat background no distractions and acoustic form will help reduce echoes and placement of the camera camera on tripod lens at eye level eye level it should not be higher or it should not go down soft carpeting will absorb sound waves and improve audio all these things we already discussed but there is a picture that is more clear to explain the things that how you can prepare a home studio a dedicated place and how you can put camera in front of you mostly 90% of us using only the laptop webcam and i believe more than 70% won't get the proper picture quality in their laptops because um, the laptop cameras are webcams are not as professional as we are looking for the con content so another thing the lightning is not properly available so sometimes the dark image is going on and sometimes you are like instead of the presenting uh, might possible your contents are very powerful but if you are not uh, your presentation is not powerful you're not looking your face is dark uh, there is not proper light and it's not uh, clear to the students at that time might possible sometimes your strong content couldn't be delivered the way you are looking for so you need to be careful with all these things positioning and any other thing another important part is choosing a camera again 
investing more getting more if you go with a a camera that is uh, only webcam built in cam on the on the laptop it might you might not get the same results but if you are going to choose you can buy some special webcams that are uh, also available in the market not very expensive but uh, and that can enhance the video quality or the photo quality of the teachers so they can present in a better way webcams such as the ever popular logitech c920 this is just uh, one of the camera uh, this is very convenient to use in a tighter space like a faculty office although the image they provide is rather basic not very professional but um, you can say better than the laptop camera you can have it uh, this kind of image by using the logitech webcam or many other cams available in the market a dslr camera everyone know about that one that um, a dslr greater and better and best quality for you especially for the videos and the pictures as well again uh, as with other cameras make sure that it is positioned at eye level I use a laptop stand to elevate or even fix the webcam on the tripod you can fix your camera on the tripod that would help you to adjust camera in front of your eye level it looks much better than shooting from that awkward lower angle sometimes people don't care about these things but these are very important things to consider if you want better image quality as i told you that uh, better image quality and color than a webcam for your lecture you could use a digital camcorder or a DSLR camera again this type of professional cameras need to fix on the tripod and camcorders like the Sony Handycam or Canon Vixia these series and DSLR cameras like Panasonic and Sony Alpha all these are very crisp images so you can invest more you can get the good results again as i said they are a bit more expensive than webcams but the video quality is much better mobile phones can be used nowadays another good thing that we do have uh, mobile phones are uh, different companies launching their mobile phones and they're uh, like specially focusing on the camera many companies are providing the best camera in their mobile so you can use your mobile as a webcam as well it is a little bit uh, comparison between the webcam camcorder and dslr you can see where these type of uh, cameras can be used have a look on that one a lecture hall classroom office active learning spaces and in the field which camera can be suitable for what kind of environment that's it now the most important part uh, recording the lectures sometimes we do have very good presentations we do have very good video qualities but we do not focus on uh, phone uh, audio audio is microphones like we are using the built in microphones from the laptop and mostly i have seen many in laptop do not have very good quality microphones so uh, you are trying to present your lecture but the audience couldn't hear well and if you have very good and strong content you have very good video quality and presentations but uh, no one can hear you clearly it means everything going to be in the garbage is getting everything waste so you need to set up your audio that is again very important that many believe that sound is actually the most important part of any video but especially a lectures audio is very important in addition to you being able to deliver the lines your equipment needs to be able to capture that audio well if your equipment is not good enough it's not capturing uh, that audio well so it means everything not in a good way this is why it's best to invest in a good microphone to record lectures and avoiding using the built in mic on your camera laptop or smartphones we can have different type of mics and to get the best sound keep the microphone as close to your mouth as possible a mic mounted on your camera 4 feet away might be a bit too far even for a very good mic another interesting thing is that normally if you have a very good mic but you are putting it 2 or 3 feet or 5 feet away it means you cannot record a good quality audio so you need to bring your mic close to your mouth two benefits you can get it at that time one your audio is very clear and very uh, crisp 
and the second thing is the background noises sometimes many mics are available which can cancel the background noises so if there is any distraction with noise or something like air conditioning or fan at that time it reduce that noise and it can bring your audio quality in the best way there are different type of uh, mics available desktop mic and boundary mics if you have a big hall a classroom at that time you need a different small speakers and mics on different locations uh, which can uh, catch your sound in a better way lavier the mics these type of mics the color mics are uh, you can add it in your collar and these mics can be wireless or with wire and you can use them as per your requirements especially once you are in the lecture hall and you want to move freely at that time this type of mics are very helpful for you after lavalier mics uh, the hand mics if you are in a big uh, hall you can use this type of handheld mics podium mics normally you have seen in your lecture hall in your classroom even in the university most of the podium could have built in mics that do have very good quality and you can use them to spread your voice a little far built in mics i believe most of the cameras and uh, laptop would have built in mics you can use them sometime temporarily but do not go with permanent solution because i told you that built in mics are not as good as you're looking for so even uh, on the cameras if you have very good built in mics but if it's 3 or 4 feet away it could not capture you as uh, clear as you're looking for here is a comparison have a look on that one what kind of mic is good for what kind of scenarios like desktop mic is good for classroom office and active learning places in the field as well and a boundary mic lavalier mic and handheld mic have a look on these all the comparisons okay we're going to move ahead now this third part is we have discussed about the dedicated place that what benefits we can get from the dedicated place the furniture the trip, uh, how to remove the echo then we have discussed about the cameras to record audio another important part is to make your audio you know, to make your video more clear bright with the colors and properly shining video lighting is again the important part of this light it right light it right means you have to put your light you should have you need to invest some kind of light which are uh, important for your recording so what happen like this one if you're using the natural light there are some disadvantages of using the natural light because that couldn't remain the same at the same time and using natural light from a window or a regular room light only will not provide the best results what is the reason we actually uh, recommend blocking off all natural light with thick curtains uh, become natural light can be very hard to control the reason is it's very hard to control natural light can sometimes be very high in beam and sometimes cloudy weather and you are not getting the exact light which you actually need it for your recording outside lighting is bound to change throughout the day and can give inconsistent lighting as well or sometimes it's harsh shadows due to its inconsistency so we strongly encourage your artificial light fixtures and light stands they will give much more control over the lighting situations so if you have artificial lights in your room you you block all the natural light with the thick curtains and this is a specific standard to be at your home and you are putting two or three lights and normally it is recommended the three lights in front in back and side on top so it can manage all the lights so back light can can remove your shadow and there is a key light and fill light this can fill up all these things we're going to discuss in detail what does it mean so here is a lighting kit you can go ahead with these type of lighting kits two types of lights are available or um, led lights or the normal lights led lights are quite convenient to use because they don't warm up the room and uh, however these tend to be little costlier nowadays it's becoming uh, more famous the led light if you have visit the professional uh, like the five years back if you visit any commercial studio at that time there were lights available very heavy lights maybe 1000 watt or 2000 watts and many lights over there that can uh, the environment very warm 
at that time you need more air conditioning to make it normalized at that time so this problem been replaced with the led lights led lights are a little costlier but they are giving you a very best environment they are not going to warm up your room so you do not need more air conditioning and so you can save in a little bit extra for the uh, led lights but you are going to save from the air conditioning and many other things regular bulb lights are fine too just make sure to choose the natural daylight tone to avoid a bluish skin tone sometimes what you are going to do you are opening the space for the natural light you are giving the artificial light so these are mixing up wrongly and not giving you the proper image quality if you have the warm light the yellow light more and you're not adjusting with the white light at that time you uh, your face become more yellow or something bluish or something that so you need to be careful with these uh, lights if you're using the bulb lights or this kind of lights so another important part is there are classic three-point lighting setup that works well so you need to be careful with that one that there are standards how to arrange the lights this is not like all three lights do you you have it and you put in front of that one and uh, this will work sometimes uh, investing a huge money but you do not have the tricks to use them or the principle if you are not using the principle of studio to arranging the lights so it means you would not be able to get the results you're looking for so there are standard three points uh, number one point is key light and number two fill light and number three you can see here this is key light this is fill light and this is backlight and this is object you're sitting over here there are three types of lights which can help you to arrange all the things what gonna be do I me mean, like what we can uh, take the advantage by the key light the first key light is placed in front and a bit to the side of the model the key light is the main light this is the main light which is putting in front or little bit on the side of the model so it can give you a proper light on your face and what happened with the fill light the fill lights contacted the heavy shadow created by the key light it should also be front but on the other side from the key lights the reason behind putting this fill light the reason because if you put it one light it is creating a big shadow on your backside so if you put it the, another light on the other side of the key light so it can reduce or finish up the shadow so it, it can give you the good results at that time but uh, you need to be careful fill up light uh, can be little farther uh, from the model do not put very close to uh, the model model mean the object the, uh, the person who is sitting do not put it very close little bit far away but other side of the key light so it can give you a reflection and uh, remove the heavy tone shadows over there these two lights should shine from just above the lecture's eye level and face a bit down another important part that uh, these board lights we have discussed that camera should be in, in the level of the eye the audio or mic should be close to your lips it's also facing your eye level and bit, a little bit you have to flip downward not upward so it can give you the best results over here. the third and last uh, light is that is backlight this light is to be positioned behind the model and creates dimensions unsticks the model from the background creating a ring of light around the shadow so this light is again adjusting the shadow which is uh, being created by the key light which has been reduced by the fill light and the last light the backlight which is putting on website can adjusting all three lights to give you the mature image and uh, a natural image which can be uh, look good which can be brighter uh, than the normal time so it, it can have a good video quality in front of you that's all from the lightning side uh, i do have a one video this will give you an idea that how you can place your all the equipment because we have discussed a lot of things in the presentations but um, visual presentation can give you a more good idea that where you can place your camera where you have to put your mic and where you can put your lights so uh, we're going to play this video please watch this video and then we will discuss again this is a quick tour of our home video streaming room um, first thing I'll mention is that I remodeled this myself uh, starting in 2019 I have an on-air light which I really like it's just a red light bulb on the wall and I, I control it with a switch right here 
and you can see it just goes on and off. Um, I kind of set it up as a not really a lark, but I didn't expect to use it a lot. We use it all the time now because so, this room gets so much use. So the first thing I want to mention is that um, though we have blackout curtains there to kind of control the lighting. You can open those up and have natural lighting, but I have everything kind of calibrated for the the main, like the ceiling lights, um, these track lights here, and then this light here. So a uh, person that's gonna stream sits in this chair. This is how I will find my wife here. Like during the school here, my wife is down here like all day, every day, streaming video classes, and it's worked out really well for her. Now we've got a, a main camera over there. We have some other cameras and microphones here. We have this main light. We have this practical kind of accent light in the back. And then we've got the, the main computer set up here and then the HDMI switcher. This is the heart of the operation, the switcher. This is an ATEM, Blackmagic ATEM Mini Pro. Um, <clears throat> this is sort of the more expensive version. There's a cheaper one, which is called the ATEM Mini. And the difference between, between the two of them, they both switch and they both appear as a webcam to a computer, which is pretty cool because that means that as you're, so I'll switch over here to the output view. So as I'm, I'm looking here, look at that guy, hi. How you doing? Um, I switch between all these different views, you can see here. Um, whatever view I'm switching to will just be part of that webcam feed. So I don't need to do anything in software on the computer, I do everything over here. Okay, next is, so in this case, I'm outputting to a PC. This is my wife's work laptop. And you can see it's just input right here, just like a, just USB-C. But I could also input, this could be a Mac, uh, PC, it doesn't matter. The other thing that the ATEM Mini Pro does that the ATEM Mini, the non-pro version, doesn't do, this can stream directly to like YouTube or Twitch live. Uh, I don't do too much of that, but it can also record. So I could stick like a USB thumb drive in or a like a hard drive even, like a mechanical hard drive or an SSD, doesn't matter. Um, and I can record directly to disk. And so I could be doing this video right here and I could be switching around like that to all the different inputs and it's gonna record all that to disk for me. And I, I actually use that a lot, it's very useful. So I'll give you a little tour then of how I have everything else set up. You can see the important thing for me is cable wrap, keeping everything tidy. Um, and I, I will just mention also the different inputs. Let's, I'll start with input number four here. This is the iPad. And um, this is just set up so that my wife can draw on here and whatever she's drawing on the iPad appears as the output and that gets streamed into Zoom or Skype or whatever. Again, it just appears like a webcam. And it's easy, she just plugs this in. This is a USB-C um, to HDMI adapter. And I actually normally will have this, uh, this takes power as well. So she can just leave this plugged in, it'll stay as long as it's powered using uh, USB-C power, it'll just stay on and it's easy for her. And then we've got the main camera. We have a table cam here. So she can, this is what I call the textbook cam. So she can um, leave a textbook on the table. This actually, you can zoom in and out as well. So I can like zoom in, zoom out. This is an old uh, camcorder, a Canon camcorder, this guy right there. And that thing's like 15 years old, but I'm just using the HDMI output. And we've also got then input three is the table, the full table cam. And that's an old GoPro that I found out in the woods. Um, no ID, couldn't return it, so I just repurposed it. Um, found in a mountain, a tarn in the mountains. And let's see, so then that's it. That's the tour of the inputs. Oh, you can do um, you can do picture in picture, as you can see, and you can move it around. That's a feature of the Blackmagic ATM Mini Pro, ATM Mini as well. So very nice. Um, yeah, now, how do I have all this mounted? Well, for me, I wanted to make sure I could easily remove everything uh, quickly so that we could use this area as a regular table for gaming. And so the first step was to mount this strut, and this is either, you'll see it as unistrut or super strut or just strut, depending on who manufactures it. And this is just uh, some shaped metal with some slots in the back. And you can see the profile here looks like that. And so you can slide things into it, um, which is actually kind of what I originally intended, but I've I've just sort of used these like clamps and things instead. So most of this is, uh, most of the stuff that you see hanging off of the strut. Oh, let me mention before I go into that, how did I connect this to the ceiling? There's just some lag bolts that go through. You can see right there, there's one of those lag bolts. And then there's like a black nylon spacer and then there's a washer on the top. 
and actually a washer between the spacer and the strut itself. And so that just, that washer keeps it from collapsing into the drywall and the nylon spacer gives it enough room to kind of mount things on it without bumping it up against the ceiling. And that's it. Uh, and that's like an inch spacer. Not a lot. Keeps it right tight up against the ceiling. And this is about a 10 foot length of strut right there. So all of this stuff that you see here, like this bar, this grip head, this clamp, I actually owned all this already. Um, I used to have a photo studio, and so this is all like photo gear, but it's not super expensive. Like that soup, that black clamp right there is probably the most expensive item. That's like a, a Manfrotto super clamp, but you can get knockoff clamps like that that are pretty cheap. This is a grip head that goes into the super clamp. And then this is just five eighths inch stainless steel tube that I buy in bulk and cut to, cut to length, but you can buy it pre-cut online. And then you can see that this 5 8 inch tube is very standard because it fits the bracket that came with this LED light. So this light is just, it's very thin LED light. It's a Niewer 660 and you can actually, um, you can turn this on and off using this remote control and you can increase and decrease the brightness and that's really useful. Uh, but I have it dialed in basically to calibrate it to about 50%. Uh, next, we have this camera right here. This is a Fuji X-T3 and I'm just powering it and I'm taking the HDMI output and then that goes over here to this mixer. Um, <clears throat> next, we have, you saw this camcorder and then the GoPro and these are both mounted to a single rod using, this is called a camera mount, a Manfrotto camera mount. It's like 15 bucks, you know, I, I, it came with uh, a super arm that I have. Or, yeah, magic arm, sorry, <laughs> Manfrotto magic arm. And uh, you can buy these individually though. So it's these little bits and bobs that kind of add up in terms of the cost. Here's, this is a, and there's a pin here, like a, this actually is supposed to be for a super clamp. Um, this guy right here, this, I spent so much time dialing in the audio. If you know audio, you know, like getting good audio is really critical. So this is actually a shotgun mic and it's, con I'll talk about how it's connected, but it's pointed down at the chair. And so what's great is you just sit down and we don't get a lot of feedback from the audio off the laptop because, and you don't have to really wear earphones if you don't want to, because this is very directional. So it's really just picking up from down there. Um, now, this is a Zoom F1 field recorder, which I already had, again, this was something that I had sitting around. There's other mics you could use, but I'm, I'm powering it and I'm taking the headphone output here. And then that goes down into the HDMI mixer, into the A10 Mini Pro. And that little red light right there tells me that that mic, which is mic two input right here, is live. Um, and the nice thing about that is, you know, as you switch around, we'll look at the, you can see that as I'm speaking, um, or if I tap, tap that shotgun mic, I can tell that the, the levels are good. <clears throat> so I love this multi-view that the A10 Mini Pro spits out. Um, yeah, pretty, that's pretty much it. So all of, oh, one other thing is that all of these, like here's the light connector. So here's the, the 660 light. And you can see up here, this is a quick disconnect. So I can pull this whole unit down as a piece. Um, same for all these guys here, like these cameras. This goes up and you can see this is the power for the cameras, but these all unplug. And I can take this whole unit down and just set it aside or set it in a closet or something. And the same for this microphone. Those all quick disconnect right around where that grip head is. Um, oh, and these grip heads, um, you can see that they're actually connected via a baby pin that is screwed into the strut itself. That is a special baby pin. That was like really the only the only special thing that I ordered. I just bought them on Amazon and they seem to work, work okay. I feel like the super clamp is probably a little sturdier in terms of connection, but they're also more expensive, so. That is it. That is the grand tour of the home streaming setup with the A10 Mini Pro. Uh, feel free to reach out to me. I'm at Ethan Schoonover on Twitter, and I'm happy to answer more questions. So that was the video. Uh, the reason behind to show you this video because the pictorial and visual effects can give you more idea that how you can place the different uh, equipment and accessories in your education studio. But have you noticed uh, one thing that in this studio, none of the equipment is very much expensive or all the new equipment they have been used. They used the camcorder 15 years older camcorder. So the thing which I want to tell you that most of the houses 
and most of the people do have most of the equipment at their home but they do not know that they can use them for their educational studies like the hero 3 this is basically gopro this is action camera and used for the vlogging and uh, some kind of small clipping and he was using in this studio that was hero 3 but right now is um, uh, hero 10 is running on yeah it, it means it, it's also 7 to 10 years old camera they are using for this one so old equipment can be used for the, your educational purpose uh, but you just need to have an idea that how you can use all of uh, the equipment that is already available at your home sometimes the, for the cares you already have um, like ipad or uh, any other um, devices like this you can have it the laptop you already have it and some mic you can invest in the mic you can invest in the uh, lightning as well that can help you to increase the credibility of your lecture so i think so you can go with these type of accessories which can for sure uh, more investment Thing, more getting good results but even with less investment you can go ahead with best environment like uh, on the screen you can see there are different type of accessories which are available uh, you can choose the right one you can choose uh, the angle you want 360 type of angles you can use it 90 degree 270 degree and you can use some kind of uh, like tripods i believe now our kids are more much more advanced most of the people do have their tripods at their homes for uh, the mobile or for the cameras they can choose that type of um, uh, tripods for their lecture as well so by using a little bit change by investing a little more for your uh, equipment you can enhance 200 percent or 300 percent the quality product than you are producing right now most of us think that only one laptop is enough for uh, best deliverance of the lectures or uh, content but i believe uh, the reason behind to choose this training session for you guys the reason is that after pandemic especially during the pandemic everyone faced a lot of problems just because of this equipment uh, and uh, they don't know that how to use or set up the educational studios at their home and with minimum equipment or minimum investment you can bring out the good result so i choose this training specially to introduce some new techniques and ideas by implementing these type of ideas you can have a good result for your content and believe me if you're going to invest uh, for your mic for your uh, camera for your lightning or something this is not going to be wasted the reason is the future is with this technology you cannot wave off completely the technology from uh, your life now in coming days i i believe that um, most of the families uh, shifted to the youtube channels uh, they are spreading their knowledge they are spreading uh, how to cook how to present themselves the vlogs uh, if you are uh, loving the traveling you can show the world that uh, how you can feel while you are traveling how you can feel how you can cook in a, a simple recipes and how you can go ahead with the good contents how you can, like i have seen during the pandemic there are more tips and tricks came up and we can learn more things by using the youtubes or using the internet so if you are going to invest something for your uh, equipment it's not going to be lost it's the uh, lifetime investment that equipment keep with you you can carry on you can move on and wherever you are you can set up this uh, kind of small studios at your home on one place and believe me once you have the proper dedicated place for the this kind of equipment you would have more energy and more motivations to do something good sometimes you want to do something but you do not feel it the reason is you do not have the environment environment does matter uh, and if you can create this kind of environment at your home uh, your productivity you can increase and you can be more productive than ever before i do have one another video but uh, it's a little bit longer but for the professional this is not for the uh, you can see for the home base but this is faculty of business and this is this video being recorded at mit in one of the leading university in us so um, i i gonna show you few clips from this video just to give you an idea 
that if you want it to be more professional what could be done by this way at, at home so i'm going to run some of the clips from this video to to give you an idea and then uh, we will have the question answer session now so I'm going to tell you about my studio setup. Look over here. You can see there are components to it. There are three, Hardware. Main, there are three main components that uh, uh, to set up the studio. Even me, like principle doesn't change. If it's the smaller setup or it's the uh, larger setup or commercial setup, the number one hardware, the number two software and number three setup. Hardware, what we have discussed, the camera, the lightning, the mic, the computer, and all these things belongs to hardware. The software, sometimes you need specific software for editing your videos or something like that. You have to go with them. That can be more professional for your lectures. Later on, you can, uh, first you have to record, then you can drop them out. You can use different type of sound effects or background music. All these things can be used by using some kind of uh, softwares and set up for sure that um, you know, in the last once you have hardware and software you need to set up you need the place that all things belongs to these three uh, principles would remain same even you are going to set up for a commercial or you are going to set up for the home setting software and the setup itself so let me start with the hardware this is a list of all the components in my home studio i'm going to divide them up into five categories audio video computing, lighting and background, and then miscellaneous. This is part of a larger spreadsheet that is in the video description, so you're welcome to take a look at it at your leisure. It contains links to every single one of these components from the various different vendor website. And by the way, I'm getting no kickbacks or payouts or spot. I also want to point out that there's a diagram number in this particular spreadsheet. I want you to pay attention to that because that's going to and finally, the last one is the desk that I'm using that's adjustable in terms of height going up and down. Now, you can certainly put together your home studio for much less than this. So you do not need to spend this kind of money. In my case, I wanted to build a studio that was capable not only of delivering online lectures, but it would allow me to edit and produce videos because again, solo operation, we're not sure how long the pandemic is gonna last, I want to be able to, to do this in a way that can be sustainable over a period of time. Now let me show you a diagram of how all of these components are connected. This is really a wiring diagram that shows pictures of every single component and how they're all connected and the kind of connectors that you need. If you do this, eventually you're going to learn the difference between a USB-A, USB-B, and a USB-C connector. And it's important to understand those distinctions because you're going to need to buy additional cables to connect them all. Now, let me just give you a tour through each one of these components. And if you want the details, again, take a look at the paper that Sean, Brian, and I co-authored. I'm going to go through each one of those clockwise using the item numbers that you have on the previous slide. Let's start with component number one. That's a Stream Deck. This is a device out of the gamers community that basically allows you to put in a single key press multiple functions. So this is what allows me to switch from scene to scene in a seamless manner just by pushing a button. Number two are the monitors. I recommend that you get three monitors. I know that that's excessive. It may seem like a very big investment, but I promise you that it's well worth it. The reason you need three is that one of the monitors is going to be your computer monitor so you can see what's going on with the various different components. The second monitor is to project your PowerPoint slide. You don't need a separate monitor, but it turns out that for a variety of reasons that we'll describe in the document, it's much more convenient to have a second monitor display your PowerPoint. And the third monitor, a much bigger one, monitor 2A in this diagram, is really so you can see your Zoom video and interact with various colleagues and students. Part three is lighting. You need at least three different lights. One, 3A, is a light that's contained in a diffuser so as to give you relatively soft light. And 3B are two LED panels that 
are very bright and give you illumination. Component four is your tripod. That's where your camera goes. And on top of the tripod is a pan and tilt remote. And the reason for that, as I mentioned, you want to be able to do a one-man show. It's very difficult to run back and forth to adjust your camera at position unless you have one of these devices where you can go up or down and adjust the height and the tilt of your camera from where you are. So a very handy device, something that I've used many times, saves me a lot of back and forth trips to the camera. Mm. Item number five is called an A10 Mini. This is a device that converts the images from a webcam into a signal that a computer can understand. And item number six is your webcam. This is a Canon EOS RP, but there are many other webcams that are perfectly acceptable, so you can pick your favorite. Item seven is a green screen. This is what allows you to create this weatherman look, as well as to have lots of different virtual backgrounds. Now, of course, Zoom has virtual background features as well, but for reasons that I'll explain a little bit later on, it turns out that it's much better to do this with your own green screen and to be able to do the virtual background outside of Zoom. Item number eight is a 10-port USB extender. You notice all of these connections going into your computer. Most computers are not gonna have as many USB ports as you will need, so this is definitely gonna come in handy. Item number nine is a foot pedal that allows you to advance your slides without having to use your hands, which is particularly handy if you're giving a talk and you've got notes and you're simply using a monitor to be able to read those notes. Item number 10 is a device called the Go XLR. This controls all the various different audio components of your online lecture, and it's really handy for things like sound effects, and to be able to put certain parts on mute while allowing other sounds to go through. Item number 11 is the uplift desk that allows you to move the desk up and down to various different heights. The reason that this is particularly handy is because sometimes when you're giving a lecture, you wanna be standing, but if you're doing a Zoom meeting for several hours during the day as well, you wanna be seated, and in that case, you can move the desk down to your seating level. Item number 12 is a document camera. This is particularly handy if you want to show specific documents, you want to do writing or drawing. You have a document camera right here. This is my remote control. And if I had some equations that I wanted to do, some derivations, I can simply write on this. Item number 13 is the wireless microphone that I'm using, as well as the charging port for the batteries. This is a really expensive mic, but I have to tell you, it is phenomenal. It's wireless, which allows me to move around without any issues, and the sound quality is just really excellent. Item number 14 is a Wacom tablet input device. I don't use it much, but for people that like to annotate on their PowerPoint slides, it's actually pretty handy. Item number 15 is Bose computer speakers. I love the sound of Bose, but in addition, it's got a really nice on off switch that you can use for certain situations where you want to turn off the speakers and maybe use your microphones to prevent feedback. Item 16 is the most expensive part on this list, the desktop workstation. Part of the reason it's so expensive is because it's really built to do not just online lectures, but video editing as well. So it's got a large amount of memory, solid state drives, and it's completely sound insulated, so it's absolutely silent. You'll hear no fans or other noise coming out of it. Item 17 is the mouse and the slide advancer. I'm using the Logitech Spotlight Remote, which is particularly cool for online lectures because you can do this. If I wanna spotlight the confidence monitor, I can show you this. Or if I wanna go back and show you the Stream Deck, I can do this. So I would propose that you get all of the components working the way you want it first and then figure out where you'd like to have everything positioned and then purchase the cables that you need. And last but not least, item 20 are in-ear monitors. You see, I'm wearing them here so that I can have direct input from the system into exactly what it is that I'm outputting to all of you. The reason that that's important is actually a behavioral fact. So it turns out that after doing a whole bunch of Zoom meetings during the course of a day, I realized that my voice is completely hoarse. And at first I didn't understand why until I started watching myself and listening to myself as I interact with, with people online. And I noticed that 
when I was listening to them through the speakers, I would raise my voice somehow to match theirs. It's, I guess, a, a human behavioral trait that we're, we're in conversations with other people. We try to match volume so that we're not louder or softer than they are. And because of the way that the room echoes, I end up speaking much more loudly than I otherwise would and really end up making my voice hoarse after just a few hours of speaking. And so when I use these in-ear monitors and I turn off the speakers, it turns out that my voice lasts that much longer. Now that we've gone over hardware, let's talk about software. So that's all uh, from this presentation. Uh, the reason behind about this video, uh, showing you this video, because uh, they have discussed very good ideas about this fund. And uh, two, I, I want to discuss with you. One, I uh, forget to tell you about the green. Green is one of the best idea. This is just simple, a green cloth, and you can put or hang up on your back screen. And by using this green screen, you can uh, you utilize your image in a multiple dimension like you can run later on in the video editing you can run a specific uh, lecture video on your behind on your background uh, and uh, you can use this green screen in a many way the second important thing in the end if you are using the speakers like uh, so it is creating the echo so your voice can be louder than uh, usual uh, it can make you tired very easily. So you need to be careful with your audio and equipment, with your mics and your speakers and everything need to be uh, set up uh, clearly over there. So that was all uh, from today's session. And uh, I hope it would be uh, beneficial for all of you and you can learn something that is very, and uh, if you're not able to buy everything even sometimes you already have some equipment and by using these techniques you can improve your lecture quality you can improve your video quality and you can go ahead with this one